In this video, we will go step by step through the layout process of a shop and look at contingencies for future expansion. As well, we want to touch on a couple of tricks you can use to get the most out of an air system under load. We will start by looking at the shop space itself. Just like how you must take geography into account when building a road, you must plan your air system around walls and passageways of your shop. This shop layout is based on a shop that we helped design the air system on some time ago. It is a single bay shop space, mostly open air 30 feet wide and 60 feet deep, with a small storage shed on the back that will be well ventilated and perfect to house compressors. Next, we want to look at the loads on the shop that we will put on the air system and where they are placed. The forging area in this shop will go on the other side of the wall from the compressors. This will put the power hammer that uses 21 CFM of free air and 140 PSI and the air over hydraulic press that uses 40 CFM of free air and 120 PSI as close to the compressors as possible. Also, on the back wall is a small sandblasting cabinet that uses up to 25 CFM of free air at 60 to 90 PSI. The last big consumer of air is a small plasma table that uses 14 CFM of free air and 75 PSI. There will also be several quick connect tools in use, such as a handheld demolition hammer, 16 CFM, HVLP paint sprayer, 6 CFM, die grinders, 8 CFM, and some other assorted tools. For sizing the compressors, all the tools together would need a bank of compressors that could produce upwards of 150 CFM at 140 PSI. But before we call Ingersoll Rand to lay down a couple of vital organs, it may be good to take into account that not every tool in the shop will be used at once. Even with two people working and the plasma table running, 35 CFM should be ample volume to supply the shop. To achieve this, we will use a 7.5 horsepower 24 CFM free air compressor that will shut off at 160 PSI and a 5 horsepower compressor that makes 10 CFM when pushed to 180 PSI. In this top off and low configuration, the smaller 5 horsepower compressor will handle top off starting at 165 psi, then off at 181 psi. The lower starting amperage will make the motor last longer in this single phase environment. This also means the large load compressor will have less starts and stops, starting at 145 psi, then off at 160, and require maintenance less often. As well, both compressors should never start at the same time. To get all that air where it is going, we will start by plumbing the top-off compressor into the manifold for the load compressor. From there, a high-pressure loop is run around the forging area, represented in red, with a high-pressure drop-down tap for larger tools such as the demolition hammer. Next, a single regulated line is run to the sandblasting cabinet directly off the manifold because its needs do not match up with the high-pressure loop and would overwhelm or disrupt the function of the low-pressure loop. This is represented in green. The high pressure line and the line to the sandblaster are more load specific, whereas the main loop could easily be overwhelmed, but it's more about covering ground. The lower pressure loop is run all the way around a shop with multiple taps at the work benches. It will also feed air to the plasma table and is represented in green. We can straighten out the lines to see their distance. The longer the line, the larger the pressure drop under load. Thus, to keep the center of the main loop from stretching out too far, we supplement it with a regulated tap from the high pressure loop. This keeps the longest run relatively short. By thoughtfully designing the system, it will be as robust as possible, and if ever the system needs to be added onto, another airline can be pulled off the main manifold, or an add-on can be made to the main loop while keeping it in balance. Thanks, and subscribe to keep up with what is new with Blue.